Hey guys, and welcome to the leftover culture review. I am so glad you're here because today we are doing some drawing using Sega's, um, Sega's Art uh, Alive. Uh, I have been working on this project for quite a while where I have been developing a whole range of original artwork using nothing but a copy of Sega's Art Alive, a Mega Drive to do the drawings on, and then a computer to do the um, recording of the drawings. Because once you turn off the Sega Mega Drive, your artwork is lost. You can't actually save your art which seems like a bit of a um, issue in a drawing and art game, but it's been fun. Like, you know, tackling this incredibly sort of rudimentary software, like it doesn't do a whole lot. It's basically like the MS Paint for the Sega Mega Drive, but I have been, yeah, like I said, trying to develop a whole range of original artwork. And I thought, what better time of year to do something kind of spooky, something kind of haunted, than Halloween. And yeah, I'm just really glad you can be here for it because I'm really excited to share with you a ghost that I have been working on. Um, so every time, this time every year, I do a couple of different um, drawing challenges on Instagram. Uh, leftover underscore culture underscore review if you want to go say hi on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I love, you know, seeing the drawing prompts coming through and then tackling some of my favorites. Um, and one of the drawing prompts this year was electric ghost. And I had this idea for a ghost that lives in a toaster. Um, obviously already I'm a fan of uh, electronics and technology, not so much toasters. I'm not really like necessarily a toaster fan, but I thought there could be like a cool way to design a ghost toaster or electric ghost, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start drawing our toaster now um, for anyone who just loves the process of Sega's Art Alive, you are definitely in for a lot of very slow moving around the screen, uh, drawing very finicky little lines. Um, this application, it's not, it's not easy to use, but it's, I guess for a lot of people, it's like the start of digital art. And if you have checked out the Halloween episode for the Leftover Culture Review this year, I was looking at another device which sort of allows people at home to um, explore their creative side, which I just love that like video games were becoming more than just games, right? These started becoming like ways for people to explore the tools that you can use professionally to do some really cool stuff which is why I've probably been giving Art Alive a hell of a lot of love. But yeah, I do really appreciate that side of things that it's not, it's not a game. It, it's an application that was made for the Mega Drive and it was made for, yeah, made for fun. But it's also incredibly frustrating. Um, and already I'm struggling getting the lines of the toaster in the top. So what I'm going to do is go back to my align tool and draw it in. Obviously I picked yellow as a background color because it's an electric ghost. It's going to be electricity. And I thought there might be like an easy way to, to show the sparks and the, the energy of that electricity. Um, yeah. Using the yellow as a background, but for now, I'm just going to make everything that's not my line work yellow, um, which should hopefully make it easier to color in as we get closer to finishing the picture. Ooh, that is starting to look more and more like a toaster, which I know everyone is incredibly excited about. Um, what I didn't really pick though was 
a palette because Art Alive only gives you 16 different colors to work with, right? So when you start your picture, you kind of want to pick a palette that has predominantly the colors that you would be using for your picture, which um, I saw the yellow and I ran with that. Um, I kind of neglected to, to check what other colors I kind of might need to use, but that's okay. Um, if it's a toaster, we should probably put a bit of a line down here. Give it more of a toastery shape. Ooh, perfect. Now we're gonna draw in the little legs. What I might do though is pause it here, let you guys just enjoy me putting this toaster together in a higher speed, and we will come back when it's time to draw the ghost. All right, dudes, we have our toaster, which, um, yeah, I'm liking it. I went between pink and green, but green is like my favorite color. So I thought we'd just make the toaster green. Um, but what we need now is our ghost. So, um, this isn't the first time I've drawn a toaster ghost. If you check out my Instagram, you'll, you'll see that I've already got one up there, but what we want is like a pretty spooky piece of toast to go along with our, um, you know, haunted theme. <laughs> so we'll try and draw a pretty nasty looking bread slice that's like popped out of the toaster. And I thought maybe for this version of Toaster Ghost, we could try making the toast itself look a little bit more vicious. Um, like maybe with some sharper teeth. And the, the zigzags, the teeth, um, I've picked obviously something, <laughs> something that requires a lot of time and effort, uh, patience, I guess, um, to actually achieve in Art Alive. Um, it does not make, you know, drawing zigzags particularly fun or easy. But... Yes, we'll give it some vicious looking teeth. Now, I didn't really give myself enough space for the bottom jaw here, but we'll see what we can do. Um, One thing I kind of want to avoid is the toast looking too much like Shrek. So I might even need to go back and revisit how I did those like the top part of that piece of toast there. So yes, it's been torn off a bit. Um, so when I want to do editing in Art Alive, for anyone who wants to give this a crack at home and try it out for themselves, I'm just going to use the background color to create like the, um, to break the line where I want to create the edits. Um, and then I can use the paint bucket tool and draw on the bit that I want to change.
Now I'm kind of tossing up whether or not to give this toaster ghost eyes. Um, what it might be kind of cool is if it just had the gnashing teeth. Um, obviously with all the limitations that we do have in something like Art Alive, we can't always manage to put those details in. And I guess I could use like a thinner brush or drawing thing, drawing stick. I don't like how that's looking, hey? Ah, dear. A lot of um, redoing stuff as well in Art Alive, at least for me. Um, always going back over lines or adding in new things later. Definitely like one of the the difficulties I have with Art Alive is that there isn't like an easy way to undo. There is like that undo button, but it takes out everything you'd last did with the, um, with the tool. That looks even worse than before. All right, one more try. I reckon we're gonna nail it this time. So yeah, um, the undo tool can be like a little bit unwieldy sometimes, especially if you have used the same drawing tool to put down your line work and then you realize that, you know, you didn't like how you did like the last thing. So you hit undo, expecting it to undo kind of like the last time you pressed or the last line you made, but it undoes everything since you've been using that tool. So you can lose a lot of work very quickly um, if you don't swap tools often, which especially when I'm doing line work, I don't like I use this, <laughs> this arrow tool to do my line work. All right, so we're gonna go with a slice of toast as the ghost and we'll give it, um, give it like a spooky kind of aura. And obviously the curved lines are a little bit easier to do in Art Alive compared to like the zigzags and the jagged lines. Um, but I think for me, one of the things that I really try and do when I'm doing stuff in Art Alive is make the lines not feel too straight. They aren't too crisp, they aren't too clean. There's a little bit of wibble and wobble because yeah, I, I, obviously it looks like it was made in Art Alive, but if I can add just a little bit of a human touch in there, then um, great. So what I wanna do now is go ahead and finish up the toast ghost, toaster ghost, electric ghost, whatever you want to call them. All right, guys, I have wrapped up Toaster Ghost. I am ready to reveal them to you. Here it is, another piece of art made using nothing but Sega's art alive. 
So like I said, I have been working a fair bit on putting together a whole bunch of different artwork using nothing but Sega's Art Alive uh, because I want to put together like a little virtual exhibition showing off this artwork and just making it easy to check out and enjoy. So if you want to head over to the leftoverculturereview.com, you will find this piece along with a whole bunch of others over there right now. It's all available over there if you want to go check it out. Really appreciate you guys tuning into this and sticking through like a whole episode of me drawing in Sega's Art Alive. Like it is essentially watching a mouse cursor very slowly move around the screen, but I really just love seeing the finished product and checking out this sort of unique piece of software that was made for the Sega. Can't call it a game. Um, but I hope you guys have a super spooky Halloween. Stay safe out there and tune in next time for some more leftover culture. Cheers, guys.